All right, what is up, everybody? Welcome back. Um, so it is Kahoot time. So I have the pin up on the screen for you guys. Um, so check that out. Uh, make sure you guys get signed in. Uh, we are gonna review unit number two. Um, to those of you who were just here a few minutes ago with the first review, welcome back. Hope you had time to, uh, to grab a bite to eat or something like that. I don't know if you did. Um, I was starving. Try and make some food, so you might see me take a quick bite here or there. Um, I will try my best to keep that um, as not distracting as possible. All right, so, um, oh good, I guess I remember to put safe, put safeties on, on names. Um, I was definitely worried about that. All right, so we got Champion Duck coming in, Charming Bee, Amazing Owl, just shouting people out. Um, so this is the video that I can pay attention to the chat a little bit more. Um, hopefully as far as the chat will be on topic. Um, you know, as much as possible, um, I can answer some questions and try to help you guys out as we go. Um, so we're gonna get going with this uh, very, very shortly. Do me a favor, hit that like button if you haven't already. Um, if you are not a subscriber yet, make sure that you subscribe. What are you waiting for? Help me get to 10K, that would be amazing. Um, thank you guys so much for all your support um, watching the channel. I really am hoping that these videos are helping you guys um, as you prepare for the AP Gov exam. Uh, I know that some of you might be feeling stressed. Um, we're just a couple of days away, Monday, 4 p.m. Um, you guys are gonna be good. I have a really good feeling about this exam. You guys are working hard, keep it up. Um, you guys are gonna be great, so. Um, can't wait to hear about how easy it was and how successful you are and how great it felt after you're done. That's for sure. Um, all right, so let's see. We have where can we get 300, 298, 99? Hey, there we go. We're at 300. I'm going to keep waiting just another minute or so um, as long as they're coming in this quickly. Um, kind of keep it up. We have more players than we do have people watching. That's always fun. I think there might be some kind of lag with uh, with YouTube and their exact numbers of how many viewers you have at, at a single moment, maybe. Um, all right, so we were up to 340, 345. Oh, we're falling. All right, there we go. All right. Um, somebody asked, which unit is the most important? I spent three weeks in unit one. I only have time to study one other unit. Um, I would definitely encourage you to watch, at, at a minimum, watch both of my Unit 2 and Unit 3 review videos, but Unit 2 is a major, major one. Um, so definitely Unit 2. I think the concept application FRQ will center around Unit 2 most likely. All right. To 360. Very, very nice. Um, let's, we are slowing down. So this is, again, it's all about Unit number 2. So let's go ahead and start. That pin is going to stay on the screen for anybody who hasn't quite gotten in just yet. So let's do it. All right. All of the following are considered mandatory spending, except those of you who were here for the Unit 2 review video, you guys are going to definitely have an advantage. We talked about a lot of these things earlier. All the following considered mandatory spending except. Those of you who weren't here yesterday and you're telling me about the lag, I know that there's a lag. It's cool. Don't worry. I made 60 seconds for each question. The lag is not that bad. See, everybody's getting in right now. We're over 250, 270, 290, 300 answers in. So again, I know there's a lag. You're not going to be able to hit it on the first second, but the time limit 60 seconds is plenty of time. You guys are going to be able to get in there, and we're going to be good. All right, Mr. Birch, thanks for sending uh, Kai over here. It's a good person right there. Um, all right, so we had four choices, Social Security, Medicare, interest on the debt, and defense, and survey says defense is not mandatory spending. Good job. Over 200 of you got that question correct. Um the most common wrong answer was interest on the debt. That is mandatory spending. Um, Congress, when they borrow money, which is one of their powers, they have to pay it back by law. Um, so Congress doesn't appropriate money to pay that interest on the debt. They automatically have to do that. 
Social Security, Medicare, we talked about that being entitlement programs. Entitlement programs are mandatory spending. All right, look at Rational Crab, 989. Got in there almost immediately. No lag over there. All right, question number two. An executive order. And you have four choices on this one as well. All right. So we're starting to get a few answers are trickling in here right now. 40 seconds left. Again, plenty of time. Don't just hit something. If you're lagging and you haven't gotten the question up yet, it's okay. We're at down to 30 seconds. And now the answers are starting to come in. All right. Here we go. Now everybody's getting in. So obviously, we, again, we have about a 20, 25 second lag, but that's okay. Don't worry about it. I don't have any prizes to give you anyway. Just want to get that review, see how everybody's doing on these questions. All right, we're up to 370. That should be just about everybody, I think. 381, 385, 386. All right, an executive order can be rescinded by a future president. So it's not permanent in the same, as permanent as legislation would be. Um, next president can just get rid of the old executive orders if he or she doesn't like them. Legislation goes above executive orders. So if um, there's a, a legislation passed that conflicts with an executive order, the legislation is superior. So executive orders can tell the bureaucracy and people how to carry out the law, but they can't make the law themselves. So they are definitely beneath laws. Um, it says unconstitutional way of making policy when Congress is slow to act, or sorry, uncontroversial. That's not true. Executive orders can definitely be controversial, um, seen as a power grab sometimes, and they don't require congressional approval. They don't require judicial approval. That doesn't even really make sense. Okay. Question number three, the belief that courts can and should overrule other branches when necessary is known as... And we have some choices. We have, is it judicial review? Judicial restraint? Judicial activism? Or judicial judicial? The belief that courts can and should overrule other branches. And the answers are flying in. We have just under 30 seconds left. Plenty of time to get in, don't panic. We're at 280 answers, 300 answers. They are flying in 320, 340, 370, 389. That looks like just about everybody. We're almost there to that 400, 399, 400. Hey, we crossed over the 400 threshold. Look at that. Let's go. Let's go. All right, so. More people got this one wrong than got it right. That's okay. Kind of a trick here, a little bit. I'm glad you didn't say judicial restraint. That's really good. Didn't say judicial judicial because that doesn't mean anything. Judicial review is when the Supreme Court does rule something unconstitutional, right? It is them overruling the other branches. But judicial review isn't like an opinion about that. It's not saying that courts can and should do it whenever they want or however frequently. It is just simply, here is the power it exists. Judicial restraint is the idea that they really shouldn't use judicial review very often. Judicial activism is the idea that they should use judicial review whenever they want. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Again, that's kind of intentionally there as a, an answer to throw you off and see if I can trap trick some people. But again, hopefully that's good practice. All right, question number four. This part of the bureaucracy with a narrow area of responsibility makes rules regulating specific industries. Again, if you were watching the review uh, at 12 o'clock, just talked about this one. I feel like that's almost the exact definition I gave, in fact. Again, don't worry about the points. Not a big deal. Um, focus on trying to get these right. We have about 30 seconds, so you guys should be pretty much coming into the question at this point. And the answers are flying in. Flying, flying in. All 
All right, so we have our four choices, 15 seconds, just to tick under that. Bum, bum, bum. Three hundred and fifty, sixty. Come on, we gotta get to four hundred. We got to four hundred last time. I don't think we're gonna make it. Three seventy, three eighty. All right, so we almost got there. Not quite though. All right, so our answer is independent regulatory commissions. Very good. Um, we have cabinet departments. They have a broad area of responsibility, right? So it's not that one. Executive agencies. They don't have that rulemaking, regulating power to the same extent. So um, they don't rule over industries, I should say. So that's really the difference there. Um, our answer is independent regulatory commissions. Very, very good. All right. Let's see. All right. Knowing deer is in first place. All right. Look at this. Let's see what happens. Question number five. The bully pulpit allows dot, dot, dot. So you have four ideas here to go along with the bully pulpit. Hopefully you remember which branch of government or which person is able to take advantage of that bully pulpit and then what they're able to do with it. All right. Twenty-five seconds left. We are over two hundred eighty. There we go. Over three hundred answers coming in. The answers are flying in on this one. I feel like that's a really good sign. I think that means people are confident we're over three hundred fifty, three hundred sixty. It's going so fast I can't keep up. Azrak uh, asks, "What topics covered in Unit Three? That is civil liberties and civil rights. That is my favorite unit of the year. It's the best." Three ninety-seven, ninety-nine. Oh, there we go. Four hundred. The last second. Amazing. When the overwhelming majority got that one correct, the bully pulpit allows the president to bring attention to issues of his choosing. Again, that fact that everybody pays attention to the president, that allows him to bring attention to things and then affect policy and put pressure on Congress and all of that. All right, knowing deer, still in first place, but we got some people coming right up. Question number six, if your congresswoman votes how her constituents want, even though she personally disagrees, what is she doing? Is that acting as a trustee, a delegate, a politico, or oof, a chump? Which is it? Votes how the constituents want, even though she personally disagrees with her constituents. Alright, alright. 30 seconds, the answer is flying in, over 100 already over 200 that didn't take long about three more seconds 270 290 300 all right excellent 325 we're starting to slow down just a little bit we have 15 seconds left can we get to 400 at 390 91 come on come on let's go let's get it 400 very nice over 400 on this one and 75% of you got this one correct. This congressperson would be acting as a delegate. That is when a congressman or woman does what her constituents want her to do, regardless of her own opinion. Trustee is when a congressperson does what they think is best, even if it goes against what their constituents want. Politico is that they do both, sometimes delegate, sometimes trustee. And Trump, well, that was just mean. Sorry about that one. All right, 28 of you have a four answer streak. Nice job, keep it up. Can anybody catch knowing deer? Let's see. Question number seven. What is divided government? Jackson Buck claims first place. If that's true, congrats Jackson Buck. Let's see if you can keep it up. I don't know. Let's see if you can keep it. Divided government. We have some tricky choices here. I don't think I mentioned this one in the uh, unit two review. So this one, you gotta remember. All right, we're at 25 seconds, over 200 answers in. Over 300 answers in, with 20 seconds left to go. We are doing well here. 476 watching according to YouTube. That is awesome, welcome everybody. Again, I appreciate it so much. Hope that this is a, you know, not a little way to review that's not so stressful. Take the pressure out a little bit. I don't know, 
fun, that might be too strong of a word, but all 398 answers. And overwhelming majority got this one correct as well. It is when different parties control the presidency, the Senate, and or the House of Representatives. It is what we have right now, correct? Trump, Republican. Senate, Republican. House, Democratic majority. So we have divided government. That's going to clearly make it a lot slower, tougher, more difficult to pass legislation, tougher to have confirmations, all of those sorts of things. The red one, that's federalism. Division of power between states and federal government or national government. Blue is separation of powers. Yellow, that's not really even anything. All right. Knowing deer, keeping that lead. Look at that, a 600-point lead. Can anybody catch knowing deer? Question number eight. You got another chance here. Every 10 years, blank changes the number of seats each state has in the House of Representatives. Two choices are vocab words. Two choices are institutions. What do I mean by this? Who's in charge of changing the number of seats? Or what is the word for changing the number of seats? So it's not even clear which way this question means. Am I asking who's in charge or am I asking what's it called? 35 seconds to go. We're starting to get some answers in here. Up over 300 answers. You guys let me know in the chat. Um, I'm thinking about doing these all weekend long. So I'm thinking about having a few more live reviews tomorrow, Sunday, and Monday morning a little bit. Monday morning we'll, we'll relax a little bit. That's not the time for cramming. It's time for feeling confident, feeling good, getting yourself centered and ready to go. Um, but let me know if that's something that you think would be helpful. I am picturing doing it on Unit 3, the documents, the cases. Um, try to give you guys all the help that I can. All right, so the term for that is reapportionment. So very, very good. Almost nobody fell for my trick. It's not the president or Supreme Court. It's a vocab term. Redistricting is going to happen after reapportionment, right? Redistricting is redrawing the maps once they've been reapportioned. So you do the reapportionment, and then we get to redistricting. All right, I see lots of yeses. That's good. Should I do also do unit reviews as well? So like do a unit three review and then do a Kahoot separate videos or just Kahoot? What do you guys think? Um, what about, yeah, focusing on the, the concept application, the argument essay? Um, you guys let me know what to do. All right, I appreciate you so much. Question number nine, which of the following pairs is matched correctly? So we have our four types of bureaucratic agencies and then four examples, but only one of them correctly matches the type of department or agency with an example of that department or agency. Got some people saying both, that's good. Got somebody from Michigan. I'm not from Michigan, but I've been there once. I saw a concert there about, I don't know, I think it was 2016. I think so. All right, we have 20 seconds left. I think that lag might be getting strong over here. We are up over 150, 200. Definitely a little slower than we've been on some other questions. This is a tough question though, so it's probably that too. Most likely, you would see a specific agency or department named for you in the prompt of the concept application. This is not something that you need to like worry about memorizing. So don't freak out if you miss this one. Obviously, you see vast majority of people did miss this. Um, the most common wrong answer was the yellow one, which said executive agency and Department of Homeland Security. The word department is a good hint that it is a cabinet position. Um, cabinet ones are all departments, so Department of Homeland Security, um, the VA Department, State Department, Treasury Department, etc. Independent Regulatory Commission, that is Federal Reserve. You basically have three of those that you'd want to know by name. Federal Reserve, the FEC, and the SEC. So the Federal Election Commission and the Securities and Exchanges Commission. Um, they each regulate a certain thing. So the Federal Reserve regulates banks and makes monetary policy. The uh, FEC regulates um, elections, which is a little bit different, and then the SEC regulates Wall Street. So again, you have that specific. Don't worry if you miss this one. The idea would be that if they gave it to you in a prompt, you'd be like, oh, I know which one that is, Cabinet Department. But it probably won't really affect your answers too much, so don't worry. All right, we are halfway there. Each of the following can cause tension between Congress and the President, except... All right, so three of these would cause tension between Congress and the President one of them would likely not cause very much tension. 
between Congress and the president. So which one wouldn't cause that tension? Alright, 30 seconds, somebody claiming to rep the 305, we're up in the 954, but we are right on the border of 305, so I'm with you, man. We are at 200 answers, we have just under 20 seconds to go, the answers are flying in on this one, over 250. Each of the following can cause tension between Congress and the President, except, we're at 335, I have 494 people watching. That is great. Again, welcome to everybody. I'm so glad that you're here today. Hey, Brielle, what's up? I see you over there. Should frame our notebooks. They're still in the classroom. Wow. Maybe you do that for me, all right? Um, and again, most people got this one right. It is the choice of who the president's chief of staff would be. The reason that would be the least likely to cause tension is because the president chooses whomever he or she wants. There is no Senate confirmation on that one. Treaty ratification, Senate ratifies. Appointment of federal judges, President nominates, Senate confirms. Passing legislation, Congress makes the bill, President signs or vetoes. So those three definitely, definitely, definitely you'd have some tension between the two parts of government. All right, knowing deer still in first place, stretch that lead out to about 800 points at this time. We are more than halfway home. We are at question number 11. What is the purpose of a signing statement? Purpose of a signing statement. Angel Squad is from Georgia, but I think she lives in Florida. What part of Florida? Down here in Pembroke Pines, South Florida, the Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood, Miami area. 30 seconds to go, and the answers are starting to come in on this one. So again, you have plenty of time. Don't worry, don't panic. You have lots of time to get there. What is the purpose of a signing statement? 20 seconds to go, we are over 250 answers. Over 300 answers. I just got a text from somebody who is uh, telling me how great the weather is in Missouri. Of course, I live in Florida, so he does have better weather, but he's in Missouri, so I don't know. Um, we'll see how we feel about that. Purpose of a signing statement. Again, good job. The vast majority of you guys got this point. Um, absolutely correct. To provide the president's interpretation of a bill. That is perfect. Um, it's not to add anything to the bill. The president can't do that. It's not something from the Supreme Court. And the last one, green, that's an executive agreement. All right. Knowing deer still in first place. Can anybody catch knowing deer? All right, number 12, what is the logic behind judicial restraint? What is the logic behind judicial restraint? Why would that be something that some judges would believe in? All right, checking out the chat a little bit while you guys are answering. We're at about 30 seconds left, so you guys are going to have your answers coming in very, very soon. Um, it's funny, the slow chat, it lives up to its name, doesn't it? The chat's moving a lot more slowly than it was yesterday. Yo, Catherine, 350 the place. I like it. Very, very nice. Very nice. Maryland, bunch of Maryland people, some East Coasters. All right, we have 10 seconds left for over 300 answers. Get those answers in quickly. Six, five, four, three, 360 answers. 370. All right, so the logic is that the court should defer to the democratically elected branches of government whenever possible. It doesn't mean that they can never use judicial review, but it does mean that they don't think that the judges should be like taking more power for themselves. They should be guardians of the Constitution and nothing more. Um, they should be like, all right, the, those other guys, Congress, the president, states, they are democratically elected, so let's let them make policy unless they do something that is so wrong that we have to stop them. The blue answer, that is strict constructionist interpretation of the Constitution. Um, that's not really going to be on the AP exam, I don't think. The yellow is original intent, and the green, that means that's stare decisis, or stare decisis. So um, those are all three legitimate ideas, but they're not judicial restraint. All right. 
Knowing deer, shocker, shocker, still in first place. Can they hold on? Let's find out. Question number 13. Which best identifies the role of precedent for federal judges? Which best identifies the role of precedent for federal judges? Jessica, with an idea, put the video on 1.75 speed until you catch up. That might work for some people. We have a little bit over 30 seconds. Again, you're probably just now getting in. Don't worry about it. You have plenty of time. Plenty of time. There's people representing class of 2020. Others representing class of 2021. It's all good. Oh, even the sophomores over here. Taking AP Gov as a sophomore. Remember, by the way, if you are a, in the state of Florida, it is now a state law requirement that to get your college, to get your bachelor's degree, you have to have a government credit in college. The AP test satisfies that requirement. So if you're in Florida, you have even extra incentive to make sure you pass AP Gov. It's, it doesn't matter what your major is. Every Florida university, public university, you have to get a Gov credit. So pass this test on Monday. All right, you guys got this. Overwhelming, you guys did amazing in this one. It's a guiding principle, but they can rule differently if they choose to do so. Question number 14, let's get right to it. All of the following are checks, are congressional checks on the judiciary, except, so Congress can do one of the following, or all of the following, except for one of these. 496 people watching right now. Again, thank you guys so much. I really do appreciate it. If you wanna help me out, hit that like button. I appreciate you for sure. If you wanna make sure that you feel subscribed, um, so you can get all the FRQ help, the essay writing help, the review, the content, all that stuff. You know I, I got you guys. And by the way, I do teach micro and macro. I'm going to start doing some reviews for my students um, after Monday passes to get them ready for the AP exam. Um, I don't know how many of you are also taking micro and macro, but let me know if you'd be interested in doing like group reviews for micro and macro stuff. Um, I can do some live stream reviews for that as well. Uh, let me know if there's interest for that. Um, that's definitely something that I can do. We have four seconds left, so 360 people are in. So which one was not a congressional check on the judiciary? It is the last one, the green answer. It says, declare a court ruling unconstitutional. The only branch of government that can declare things unconstitutional is the Supreme Court. Congress can never do that. They can impeach federal judges. They can, the Senate confirms the appointment of those judges and they can change the jurisdiction of the court. So those were all valid. 11 of you guys have a three answer streak. Good job, keep it up. Question number 15, we are three quarters of the way there. So let's do it. Gotta pass the AP exam to get the credit, come on. What's up Dr. Katz? Best AP Gov teacher, retiring after 40 years of helping the children, the community, Man, that means that if he was teaching high school 40 years ago, bro, he has students that are like 57, 58 years old. That is crazy. All of the following contribute to bureaucratic independence, except we have 30 seconds to go. The answers are flying in. It seems like this one must have been a really, really easy one. Guys, killing it on this one. 350 answers. We've got 20 seconds left. And we still got so many answers in. Doing awesome over here. Whoa, 470, wow, where did all these people come from? We 500 answers on this one. Unbelievable, 525. I had no idea there was this many people. YouTube only thinks there's 478 of you. We showed them 555 responses on this one. And overwhelmingly, you guys are correct. Great job. Congressional oversight, that does not contribute to bureaucratic independence. That is Congress keeping track of the bureaucracy, right? It is them holding the bureaucracy accountable making the leadership from those agencies come and testify. It is them using their power of the purse to influence and affect the agency to make sure that it's not more independent, that's actually less independent, that's doing what Congress wants them to do. Discretionary authority, that means that they have independence to choose. If they can't be fired, that gives you more independence. And the fact that they have expertise and specialization, again, that means that they know what they're talking about more than Congress does, that helps them to be independent as well. All right. Let's hit the next one. <clears throat> knowing deer in first place. I think knowing deer's gotten all the questions right so far. 
Question number 16, I see a few of you have asked me to read the answers out loud because it's blurry for you, so I will do that. How does the president's veto power affect the legislative process? Red. It doesn't. Congress frequently overrides presidential vetoes. Blue. It leads to bargaining between Congress and the president. Yellow. Presidents can't threaten a veto before a bill is passed. And green. Bills are rarely passed by the House if the Senate isn't going to pass them. All right. How does the president's veto power affect the legislative process? 20 seconds. Our answer's coming in a little bit slower this time. This might be a little bit trickier than the last question. 10 seconds. 240 answers. You guys got to get those answers in. 7, 6, 5. There we go. That's 300. But a lot fewer answers this time than the last one. Got a little over 300. I don't even know. 330. All right. The answer is blue. Again, most of you who did get an answer, you guys did get this one right, so that is good. It leads to bargaining between Congress and the president. So if the president says, you guys passed that bill, I'm threatening you, I'm going to veto it, Congress has some choices. They can put something in the bill that the president does like. They can take out the part that the president doesn't like. They can negotiate. The president can be like, all right, you give me this other bill and I'll sign this one. It's all about that bargaining, that kind of thing, bargaining and persuasion. All right, knowing deer still on top, can anybody take over first place? Number 17, all of the following accurately describe checks on the bureaucracy except red says Congress can use its power of the purse. Blue, Congress, sorry, blue, president can fire cabinet secretaries. Yellow, president can abolish an agency. Or green, Congress can pass legislation overriding administrative regulations. All right. Wait, so is passing the AP Gov a high school graduation requirement? No, AP tests are never a high school requirement. Um, passing, getting a Gov credit is a high school graduation requirement. Um, passing college level Gov is now a college requirement in the state of Florida. So I'm only talking about my Florida people. If you go to a Florida public university, um, you're going to be required to have a Gov credit from college. It can come from AP. Your high school Gov credit, if it's just regular honors, does not count. But your AP credit does count as your Gov credit. But you got to pass the AP exam to get the college credit, like normal. All right. Um, so. Our gold or yellow answer, president can abolish an agency. That is not true. Congress can use their power of the purse to increase or decrease the funding of an agency, depending on if they're pleased or displeased. Presidents can fire uh, cabinet secretaries, and Congress can pass legislation that would get rid of or change or override a regulation that they don't like. Presidents cannot abolish agencies, though. Congress is the only one who can do that. All right, we are at question number 18. We are almost there. Let's keep it up. Judicial review allows the Supreme Court to strike down all of the following except. All right, I don't want to put no pressure on you, but I think this is an easy one. We should all be getting this question right. Judicial review allows the Supreme Court to strike down all of the following except. Red, federal laws. Blue, state laws. Yellow, executive orders and actions. Green, constitutional amendments. All right, we got 30 seconds left. Again, don't panic. Get your answers in. You have plenty of time, plenty of time. Plenty of time. Bum, bum, bum. 330 answers, 350 answers. All right, we got 15 seconds. Let's see if we can get that back up to where we were in that last one. We are over 400 answers right now. Great job. You guys are doing amazing right now. 430, 435, that number sounds familiar. Anybody? Anybody? All right. Ooh, that was not as easy as I thought it was. I thought this was going to be like a 100% one. Okay. Supreme Court cannot strike down a constitutional amendment. And if you think about it, a Supreme Court just rules on whether things are constitutional or unconstitutional. If something is a constitutional amendment, that means it's in the Constitution, which means it is by definition constitutional. So they can't strike down a constitutional amendment. They absolutely can strike down federal laws. They can definitely strike down state laws. They can also strike down executive orders, executive actions, bureaucratic rules and regulations. Um, all right. Knowing deer still there. We got two questions left. 
Two questions left. You guys have almost survived. You can relax a little bit, play some video games, take a nap, go eat some lunch, go get some Starbucks. Whatever it is, it's going to make you happy. Gerrymandering is red, says unconstitutional. Blue, redrawing congressional districts. Yellow, changing the number of seats a state has in the house. Green, drawing districts in bizarre shapes. Jared, feeling good about this one. Tanya, feeling good about this one. Catherine, saw what I did there. 435. I like it. I like it. Alright, 25 seconds left. We have over 200 answers. 250 answers. They are flying in. Prentice pushed the wrong button. It's okay, girl. It happens sometimes. It happens. It's happened to me too. 325 answers right now. We have just over, there we go, 10 seconds left. 335. 345, like the number of wins for my guy Don Shula. Passed away the other day. Moment of silence, RIP. Alright, so gerrymandering is drawing districts in bizarre shapes. Very good. It is not unconstitutional. It has been ruled constitutional several times, even though it's controversial. Blue was my trick answer, um, but that is redistricting. Remember, redrawing congressional districts, you can do it in a neutral, fair, normal shape way. That's redistricting. Um, drawing them in bizarre shapes, that's when we're talking about uh, gerrymandering. And good, nobody fell for my reapportionment answer, so that is awesome. All right, Knowing Deer has been leading this thing the entire time. Can anybody knock him or her off with one question to go? Question number 20 of 20. Which statement about the House and Senate is accurate? Red, the Senate initiates all tax and revenue bills. Blue, the House has can form itself into a committee of the whole. Yellow, the House can have filibusters and holds. Green, the Senate can use discharge petitions. All right, so, you guys are probably getting in there right about now. We have just over 30 seconds left, and the answers are starting to come in. And here we go. Now we're starting to pick up a little bit. Pace coming in. Over 100 answers. 150. 20 seconds left. This is the last question. Let's try and get this one right. I know it's a tough one. I did not end on an easy one. I wanted to make sure that this review matters for something. I want to just give you 20 easy questions. That's not a good review. All right. Some people in the chat are hoping for blue. I don't know. I can't say yet. I can't say yet. Somebody else hoping for red. Alana says this is easy. All right. The answer was the blue answer. The house can form itself into a committee of the whole. It's kind of a weird procedural thing. It's where the entire house, all 40, 435 can be there. The house can be like, all right, hit the gavel. We are now a committee. All 435. We're a committee. We're going to mark up this bill. We're going to edit. We're going to pass it as a committee. Then they hit the gavel again. We're not a committee anymore. Now we're the House floor, and now we're going to vote to pass the bill. So it is used to speed legislation along. The others are wrong because the House initiates all tax and revenue bills. The Senate is allowed to filibuster and issue holds, and the House has discharge petitions. That is, those are used to force bills out of committee. All right, so lots of Animal Crossing talk. You guys got to tell me, I've heard nothing but great things about this, but... I don't know, like, should I check it out? I don't even have a Switch. I'd have to get a Switch first to get that. If I was gonna get a Switch, it'd probably be for Mario Kart. So you guys let me know. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that this review helped. I hope that it was fun. Let's see who won this thing. Our podium, drum roll. In third place, answering all 20 questions accurately was Speedy Gator, great job. Um, Yellow Newt in second place, 19 out of 20. And in first place, our wire to wire Victor, Knowing Deer. Great job to everybody. Again, then we have Lucky Ferret and Excited. I don't know, probably Excited Deer. It went way too fast for me. In fourth and fifth, fifth place. You guys are amazing. Great job by everybody. Um, I had a lot of fun. Again, from your comments, it seems like you guys want to do this again. So I'm going to plan tomorrow, Sunday. We're going to do Unit 3. We'll do required documents. We'll do required cases. Um, we can do some FRQ stuff, other things to uh, help you guys get ready. Again, relax. Don't panic. You guys got this thing, all right? Hit that like button. Subscribe for me if you haven't already. I appreciate it. You guys have a great rest of your Friday, all right? I will see you later. Have a great day.